Okay, so in this video, what we're gonna do is see how we can create a medical animation, a very common type of animation. We'll create some blood cells and have them kind of traveling through a blood vessel. And what that's gonna allow us to do is see uh, a lot of different techniques from you know how to model all this stuff, um, but how to get objects to follow along a spline um, using MoGraph, as well as how to add some dynamics so that the objects do not intersect each other, which can be very helpful uh, in a variety of purposes. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna do everything from scratch here. And actually, just so you guys can see all of my C4D window here. Uh, and the first thing I'm gonna start with here is the path, the blood vessel that these blood cells uh, will go through or vein or, or whatever you would uh, like to think of it as. So um, I'm gonna go into a top view here and just create something that has maybe just a little bit of a curve to it. So eh, something like eh, that, all right, can work. And if we need to adjust that, obviously we can. One of the great things about working with splines here, and this whole process is gonna be pretty um, non-destructive here. So just gonna have this maybe go up a little bit. Actually, why don't we just get rid of that altogether? Yeah, looks like that can work. Um, and if you've never moved points in three dimensions before, uh, what you want to do um, is, and I'm not really seeing the handle there, so let's, oh, you can see that one, um, is what you can do to work with the handles, actually make sure you have one point selected, make sure you're in the move tool, uh, and then you can work with your handles. Now in a orthographic view, this can be a little bit easier to do. Um, where this can be tricky is if you're in a perspective view and uh, you don't know necessarily what axes you're working with here. So uh, that's where our axis locks come into play. So you can lock a handle um, on a given axis. So now, even though it may not always look like it, um, I'm not moving this handle on the X axis, only the Y and the Z. And if you want to confirm that, we can come here and see that regardless of what I'm doing, this is not moving on the X axis, only the Y and Z, uh, even though it can be a bit tricky to always see that. Um, so let me just reset this one in hopes of getting a handle here. It may just be so small that it's really hard to see. Oh, well, um, we can make this work with this one just like that. Cool. So we have that. That should work for now. Um, what I'm going to do to create the geometry for our blood vessel is throw this into a sweep. Right now, the sweep is going to need another shape to extrude it along. That will be a circle, and that circle looks a little bit too large. So I'll scale it down till it is a size I like. And I believe we can come in here and turn off the caps. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is kind of just frame a view I like. Let's get rid of that work plane as well since that's just kind of in the way. So that is looking pretty good. I actually wouldn't mind if it was a little bit longer. Um, that's looking pretty good. So once I'm happy with a view, go ahead and create a camera add a protection tag to it so I don't accidentally uh, move it. Um, so now what I can do is maybe come in here, and like I said, just make this a little bit um, longer. So as I move it that way, I may wanna move it up a little bit. Sure, that looks good. Like I said, we can always adjust this down the road if we would like, but I think that looks pretty good. I, until we get something that you know, gives us a sense of depth in this. Uh, it's gonna be a bit tricky. Um, and then the last thing I think I'll do with uh, the sweep here is give this a few more segments, and that's gonna be uh, working with our intermediates point type here. I'll just turn down this. Actually, let's just do like something like natural. And there we go. Um, we wanna make sure we have enough segments uh, that can be helpful when it comes time to do the simulation for this. So we have our um, kind of path here, our vein, our blood vessel, whatever you want to call it. Now to actually create the geometry we're going to have moving through this. And I'm going to do that by using a, uh, actually, I don't want a cylinder. Um, really, I mean, I just want a torus that's been kind of filled in. So I guess we'll just do that kind of using a cylinder. Back to my perspective view. And let's see what we want here. We want height segments down to that. Lower the overall height. Um, caps, fill it. Actually, I'm not sure we want to fill it quite yet. 
do want some height segments, or I'm sorry, cap segments though. Perfect, like that. I will come in here and select our middle set of polygons, scale this in. We don't want them to cross. And ultimately, I'm gonna put this in a subdivision surface so we can get a sense of what that's going to uh, look like. And we're starting to get a little bit of that kind of shape, but I think I wanna exaggerate it just a bit more. So something like that um, is starting to look good. Got those still selected. So yeah, I think that will, will do. That without this, yeah. Pretty happy with that. And now that's obviously way too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down. Sometimes that can give you issues when you go and throw this in a cloner, but I think we'll be okay because it's in a subdivision surface. So that size looks a bit better there. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is drop that into a cloner. Okay, just held um, option down with the subdivision surface selected uh, to make sure that goes inside. Call this red blood cells since that's what I envision this would be. Uh, I am not a medical professional, so just kind of winging this. Um, now for the mode here, what we're going to do is choose object, and that'll allow us to create clones on another object. And we're going to want to use the same um, line that is in our sweep. So I will drag that in there, and I'm going to name this sweep um, uh, vessel. I guess there's our camera. Place that at the bottom. Um, and now we can see we have these. You know, looking through our camera now, um, cloned along our spline. And they're right now being just kind of uh, evenly distributed or relatively evenly distributed. Uh, if we wanted them to be more evenly, we could switch it to even and um, really go to town here. Now, what's neat about this is one, I, I still think these are a bit too big. So um, I'm gonna come down here and just scale this down. Maybe something like that. And all I wanted to do was animate this, then we could just increase the rate here. And now we're gonna get some movement. Okay, now we're probably a bit too close here with the camera, which is why we can see them kind of being spawned. So if we just move this up just a little bit where maybe we don't see that quite as much. See, yeah, that looks pretty good. Put my protection tag back on. Uh, now this looks too regular, looks too perfect. And we can start to add some of this more natural movement here with rate variation. So we can turn that up as high as we would like. You can see some are moving faster, some are moving slower. Probably don't quite want 100%. Um, but yeah, we're starting to get some interesting movement there. Uh, ultimately, though, we want more of these and we want them to not be so perfect. Uh, so I'm going to increase the count again. All right, maybe something which is going to probably seem a little bit ridiculous for right now. I'm also going to check smooth rotation on just because that can help uh, for more complex splines to help smooth out the rotation. Um, and I don't really think we need any offset. Yeah, um, with that, that's not going to help us. But we do want to add a random effector. So that's going to help randomize a lot of things. So right now, the position, um, we can even start with just rotation here. Just start to do a little bit, probably not too much, but maybe, yeah, 15 or so. The 32 really isn't doing a whole lot since it's just kind of rotating it around this way. So that looks pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to go into position and start to zero this out. Okay. And then slowly just kind of space these out as wide as we can. All right. So maybe something like that, something like that. And actually the Z really isn't gonna make too much of a difference. Um, maybe we'll just keep it at like seven, just for a little bit. Uh, but now you'll see, we get a whole bunch of moving blood cells. Now, uh, depending on the size, you may actually not even need to use dynamics here. So that's always an added bonus. Not that there's anything wrong with dynamics, I'll go through and add them in a second. Um, so we can at least kind of get a sense of how to work with it. Um, but you know, there's very minimal overlapping. We're not getting any overlapping between here and the exterior part, which is nice. Um, and what we could do to help make sure these don't overlap any uh, or at all 
would be to use a push apart effector. Okay, so push apart. Obviously that 100 centimeters is too far. Really what I wanna do is take a look at the size of this object. So I can see it six by, you know, 1.7 by six. So in this push apart, if I just type in seven, these really shouldn't be any further away than seven centimeters. Now you can see one of the problems with the push apart, um, at least in the order we have it, is that it's making these kind of baker shimmies. Now I'm hoping if we switch the order here, that will fix it. Uh, unfortunately, it made it 100 times worse. Um, so while this is okay, it obviously is giving us some, some motion we don't want. So dynamics it is. Now to make um, dynamics make a little bit more sense here, um, what I'm going to do is make these cells quite a bit bigger. Okay, so that way we do get some overlap. Right? The more overlap we have, the, the more reason we would have to use dynamics. So, all right, the dynamics portion of this should be pretty easy. All I'm gonna do is on my, make sure this is paused, um, on my cloner add, oh, I guess it's under bullet tags now, that's right, a rigid body tag. And I also wanna make sure on the vessel, I add the collider tag. Now with um, the collider tag, I do want to see, uh, we may need to tell it to use both sets of normals here. If, or maybe even just um, flip the normals, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I can tell you what happens when I hit play right now is nothing fun, okay? So we can see they all just drop, all right? Um, and so what we want to do is tell them to still kind of behave uh, and, and take into account the MoGraph animation we've created here. And the way you do that is in the fourth section, you have follow position and follow rotation. The higher these values are, the more it will uh, consider the animation um, that's already on these objects, whether it's MoGraph, whether it's keyframes, and it'll you know, do so whether you wanna do it just for position, just for rotation, or both. So I'm gonna set this to say five for position and just get a sense of what we get. We can see that is not anywhere close enough. So I will go higher. Okay, try again. We can see still nothing. That's quite interesting. So, oh, that's because I'm on the blood vessel. That's why. So on our cells here, we'll just try a value of 10. All right, so now we can see they're no longer intersecting, but you know they are kind of shaking and, and rotating a lot uh, to avoid that. And that's probably you know a bit more movement uh, than we would want. And so that's where follow rotation can come in. We can see now how we have a little bit less um, with the rotation. Uh, there's still gonna be some, okay? And we could take this even higher, okay? Um, actually, doesn't look too bad, but uh, still probably a bit too high. So let's go 75. I don't mind a little bit of kind of, you know, movement, tumbling, whatever, that would be uh, expected. Uh, and now really the only issue is that it takes a, a few frames for this to kind of settle um, into place here. And in theory, we should be able to kind of fix that by finding um, out where our, where is it? There it is, uh, the set initial state is. So this uh, set initial state button will allow us to choose a specific frame and use this as the uh, beginning frame of our simulation. And so. Um, since these are already kind of in place, they won't need to settle, they won't be intersecting, and so it should give us uh, a little bit better of an end result. So I will hit set initial state, and now when I go to my first frame, we can see it's the exact same. And so now, okay, oh, this is what we get, which isn't really working for whatever reason. That's really strange. Um, I don't think caching is going to help this, but let's see. No, nope, they still just want to kind of settle, do whatever. So for whatever reason that, um, you know, set initial state wasn't working, uh, no big deal. All right. Um, honestly, what I've done in the past is just kind of given myself a little bit more room in our animation. And not that we're really seeing it, but uh, let's, let's see, if we go to the first frame, we should be able to see what happens with the random here. 
let's position these a little bit further out so that they do kind of intersect um, the, the walls here. And so we can see some of that. You'll see some of them are actually even outside as well. Uh, but now, you know, they may bounce off the wall a little bit. You know, occasionally you'll get some that uh, get stuck and get thrown out. Um, but yeah, now we have this interacting with the, the wall. And you can get a pretty nice looking animation. The great thing about this setup is that it does not have a definitive length. It can be as long or as short as you need it. Um, it's going to keep going as long as we um, want because this is actually loop doesn't really matter, but it's just constantly um, creating. Well, actually, I do think loop matters. Um, yeah, that's right, because it's making more, taking the ones that finish and putting them back to the beginning, which is probably why that uh, set initial state uh, didn't work now that I think about it. Um, but yeah, we have a pretty flexible setup here. Uh, I do actually think we'd probably want to increase the rotations a bit more. I'll do it even on the heading axis, even though it won't matter. Um, this would be a great uh, kind of project to add, you know, some depth of field to. In fact, we can do that pretty quickly. Um, just in our perspective view, if you've never kind of seen this before, it's a really nice way to set up depth of field. And it's quite easy to, um, you know, set it up and preview this with an animation since we can do it in our camera view here. And this works with Redshift. It works with the physical renderer. Um, first thing we want to do is make sure we turn on depth of field. And then the two settings we'll finish up here are the focus distance and our f-stop. Uh, now the focus distance, not 100% certain it's gonna work on the cloner. Let's kind of just see. No, okay, it is. I wasn't sure if it would treat the cloner as a single object, but it uh, does seem to read the individual clones. So that's really nice. So there's um, our focus distance set. I set it kind of further away. We can see these are close that are you know in focus. Maybe we'd want the opposite. Maybe we would want to animate this. Oh, I just noticed we have those, uh, the smoothing issues there. Oh, well. Um, and then the f-stop to add more or less depth of field. Now, since I really didn't take scale into account here, um, these values probably aren't gonna work quite as well as they might. Um, had I, you know, done this realistically, although this would be a very macroscopic, you know, scene anyway, so um, that might've thrown things off. But yeah, we now have depth of field. We can adjust it. Please try to. And, you know, could very easily animate that. Although, yeah, that's way too much depth of field. It's like everything uh, is out of focus now. So let's raise that f-stop up a little bit. So there we have it, okay? Um, medical animation with some blood cells in a vein or blood vessel um, using MoGraph, using Dynamics, and, you know, getting them to work together. That's a really uh, fun thing to do. And I know there are a lot of, you know, tutorials with spheres where they all kind of like um, spread out uh, that type of thing, but same type of idea uh, in concept here. So that's going to do it for this video. Let me know if there's anything else you would like to see and take care.